A two-time major golf champion and figurehead of Live Golf has had enough of some of the remarks made by PGA Tour players, including Tiger Woods and Rory McIlroy. What statement did he make in response to them? Also, what is the reason for the 28-year resentment behind Greg Norman's Live Golf Tour? Watch this video to the end for answers to these questions. Rory McIlroy demands that Greg Norman leave Live Golf. Rory McIlroy Roy, the number one golfer in the world, stated on Tuesday that Live Golf CEO and Commissioner Greg Norman must resign before the PGA Tour and the Live Golf Circuit can collaborate. Before this week's DP World Tour Championship in Dubai, McElroy told reporters that a compromise between the two sides won't be reached until Norman, a two-time Open Championship champ, is no more the public face of the new course, being financed by Saudi Arabia public investment fund. McElroy stated that there are a couple of things that need to happen on the live side. He then said that it's time to sort of say Norman has got this thing off the ground, but no one is going to talk unless there's a grown-up in the room who can truly try to mend bridges. He said that he thinks Greg needs to go. He thinks he just needs to depart stage left. He's made his mark. Live Golf contends that the PGA Tour has wrongfully suspended players for participating in live golf tournaments and is abusing its monopoly position to stifle competition in a federal antitrust case it filed with a few of its players. In a countersuit, the PGA Tour asserted that live golf had violated the terms of the agreements it had with its members. Golf has undoubtedly had a very contentious year, according to McElroy. He has said that the optimum scenario for golf is for the top players to play together which is not the case right now. He worries about the game when that happens. McElroy stated that it's acrimonious because people are suing one another and there are ongoing cases. It's also extremely very messy. So once more, if all of that can be resolved in some way or another, one may get to a place where forgiveness exists and people can communicate and find some kind of compromise or common ground. But doing that is incredibly difficult. Why while all of this is going on, Greg Norman stated that Live Golf should receive praise from Rory McIlroy and Tiger Woods. Greg Norman is making significant preparations for the next golf season and has big goals. Norman is enraged by remarks made by PGA Tour athletes. He thinks Live Golf has given them even more benefits. According to TheAge.com, Norman stated that the players of the PGA Tour are the beneficiaries of what Liv has done, being the leader on a new distribution mechanism. He then said that every PGA Tour player, including Tiger Woods and Rory McIlroy, ought to express gratitude to Liv. Without Liv, the PIP, Player Impact Program, would not have been expanded. Without Liv, the prize money would not have grown. Norman continued by saying that he is happy that the PGA Tour had to respond to Liv. What they have accomplished on the PGA tour in such a short period of time is proof of the value of competition. Norman made it clear that Live Golf intends to bring in a few more well-known figures, although it is unclear who those additional figures would be. He said that these are still just assumptions, but they are important players. He stated that they would definitely end up adding additional players. The success of what transpired this year has generated a lot of curiosity. These players are still conversing with one another. Contrary to various media narratives, they do not harbor animosity toward one another. They still hang out in the same locker room and play golf together. Cameron Smith asked for live golfers to be allowed to compete in the majors. Norman responded, saying that if a live player wins a major the next year, it will demonstrate how they function within the ecosystem. He concluded by stating that the players are the best and they chose to join live because it offered them the chance to join a generational wealth opportunity that has emancipated them from being tied to one circuit. Now, they have options. What caused the grudge behind Greg Norman's Live Golf Tour? As the face of Live Golf, Greg Norman is clearly paid an absurd amount of money, but the 67-year-old strongest driving force in his ongoing conflict with the conventional tours may be a three-decade-old snub. Although the two-time major 
Mr. Champion claims he doesn't harbor resentments. The Sharks' 1994 plan for a world tour was clearly rejected, which put the Shark at odds with the dominant PGA Tour. Norman, who was at the time one of the top players in the game, intended to organize a number of high-quality small field competitions to go along with the current tours. The Australian believed that golf needed more of a global presence, certainly more than what the PGA Tour, which is based in America, could provide. Nick Price, Norman, Nick Faldo, Bernhard Langer, and Jose Maria Olizabal, the top five players in the world at the time, were all non-American citizens. But in response to the threat, the PGA Tour, which was then led by Tim Fincham, sent a message to its players informing them that anyone who participated in a World Tour tournament would face suspension. It draws an amazing parallel to the current golf industry feud between the established players and Norman's Live Golf. Norman described his disappointment with how it turned out in his 2006 book, The Way of the Shark. He wrote that the more he considered it, the more defeated he felt. He stated that incorrect remarks were made because PGA Tour management responded too quickly and without doing their due investigation after reacting defensively and emotionally to their suggestion for the world tour. He then stated that he realized that Fincham didn't really want to resolve anything with us. Additionally, he stated that it was quite obvious to him that Fincham was gently criticizing those of them connected to the world tour for prioritizing their own financial well-being over the interest of golf. In response to the potential for a breakaway series, the International Federation of PGA Tours established the World Golf Championships events in 1999. These competitions aimed to bring the top golfers from across the world together outside of the four major championships conducted annually. The vast majority of WGC events have found a home in the United States, despite being originally intended to be played all over the world, reducing them to little more than an extension of the PGA Tour. Norman stated that he doesn't think this series has enhanced the internationalization of the game, and he would expect that if the original International Federation of PGA Tours members were asked, they wouldn't see any parity in the game today. In contrast to the PGA Tour, the majority of the other tours are actually struggling. Norman stated that, in his opinion, the PGA Tour hadn't done much to bring the various tours together. He doesn't think the tour ever had a real desire to create such a series, the author said. When Norman, at one point, received a memento from the WGC, his true emotions became apparent. It was a little, squishy ball that was emblazoned with the words World Golf Championships and had a map of the entire world on it. Norman rose up and threw the ball into the wall as hard as he could. There is little doubt that smaller tours all around the world, like the Australasian Tour, have suffered irreversible harm as a result of the PGA Tour. When the PGA Tour switched to a wraparound schedule a decade ago, events like the Australian Open, which were played in the American winter, suffered greatly. Previously, the PGA Tour had a clearly defined off-season. The PGA Tour has hinted at abandoning the wraparound schedule recently, but the harm in places like Australia may already be done. While Live Golf has divided the game, with Norman being uninvited to the Champions Dinner at this year's Open Championship, he also regretted that the doomed World Tour cost him connections with players who he had long believed to be close friends. Norman stated that the PGA Tour officials unleashed a propaganda campaign that expertly painted him as someone he is not, rather than saying, Greg, you have a terrific concept. Let's work together on this thing. A small group of fearless individuals who weren't afraid to question the status quo brought about significant change in the globe, and as a result of it, they were constantly attacked. He served as the point person for the world tour. He received all the shots. The Australian felt the incident contributed to his demise as a power in the sport. He had won the second of his two Open Championship championships in 1993, the year before he attempted to start the World Golf Tour. Norman wrote that the entire experience seriously damaged him. He felt both hurt and really angry. In turn, that feeling sapped a lot of his vitality. He didn't want to go out and play golf anymore. When he did, he started to wonder, what the 
fuck was he doing out here? Norman simply didn't want to continue to support the PGA Tour. He no longer felt the urge to do anything to promote the PGA Tour because he now saw himself as nothing more than a bystander. Do you think Norman leaving will really help matters? And do you think Norman's grudge is justified? What do you think about Woods thanking Live Golf? As Norman stated, let us know in the comment section, as well as other topics you want to see on this channel. Please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.